Today I'm going to be changing the front brake pads on this 2004 Honda CBR600RR. The procedure is exactly the same for 2003 and 2004 models and slightly different for the 0506. So here's a quick look at some of the tools we're going to need today. Um, you're going to need a torque wrench that's good to at least 30 foot-pounds. Um, I'm referring to a shop manual here. This is the climbers which I think is pretty good. Um, you're going to need a socket. Um, a 12 millimeter socket with a ratchet, um, two sets of brake pads uh, since we've got two rotors in the front. Um, the EBC double H pads are pretty popular for our bikes. Um, the part number you're going to want if you want to use these are FA296HH. And then you're going to need a 5 millimeter Allen wrench, um, or even better if you've got a set of um, socket adapters, um, that'll be great so you can torque them properly. Um, and then some brushes just for uh, cleaning cleaning the parts off and brake cleaner There are a couple more things um, Phillips number two screwdriver eight millimeter wrench and uh, Four new caliper bolts for the 0304 the Honda part number for that is 90131 KBV 003 Honda recommends that you replace those caliper bolts every time you remove a caliper um, that may be excessive, uh, probably very conservative, and there's probably hundreds of people out there that have reused their old bolts without a problem, but I have heard of one or two people that have had these bolts snap off on them, and that's just not really something I want to risk for a few dollars. So I, I got four new bolts, and I'll probably be replacing them every time I get a new front tire. But if you choose to reuse your old, uh, your old bolts, here's an old one here, I mean they look pretty much the same, but you're not going to be able to tell. So the least you can do is clean off all the threads with a wire brush and apply some medium strength lock uh, thread locker like a blue Loctite. Alright so I'm going to start over here on the right side which is identical to the left just a mirror image um, and we're going to grab our five millimeter allen bit and just crack loose these pad bolts. And we don't need to take them all the way off just break them loose um, it's a lot easier to do this on the caliper while it's still mounted to your fork. Next step is we're going to grab our 12 millimeter socket and ratchet and remove our caliper bolts. And I'm going to cheat a little bit here with my impact just to speed up the process. Alright, so this next step is often overlooked, but it's important. Um, what you're going to want to do is crack open your brake fluid reservoir. So in the next step when we are compressing the pistons to make room for the new pads which are thicker, um, the fluid has somewhere to go and it's not uh, pressing up against the air pressure that's trapped in the reservoir. So all we got to do is just crack it open. We're not we're probably not going to need to take any fluid out. Um, just in case, make sure there's towels around because brake fluid is very corrosive. And just pop the cover off and these membranes as well. Next we're going to pull off the brake hose retaining bolt which is a uh, 8 millimeter. And now our caliper is free but don't pull it off just yet. Um, you're going to want to compress the pistons a little bit by uh, pushing and pulling on the caliper to create a little bit more clearance for the new pads. Now our caliper is free but we don't want to just pull it off and let it dangle which puts a lot of undue stress on the brake hoses. So instead we're going to grab a coat hanger or a bungee or something like that and um, I'm hanging mine off of my brake lever and you just pull it off and uh, let it hang from that coat hanger instead. And now we can grab our five millimeter Allen bit and pull these brake pad pins out. And now your um, spring clip and your brake pad should be able to slide out freely. And just make sure you take note of the orientation of this spring clip because it does have a direction to it. So I went ahead and cleaned up this spring clip um, with just a brass brush and brake cleaner. 
and um, the brake pad pins as well. So now they're nice and shiny. And I'm going to put a coat, light coat of this uh, brake caliper grease uh, just on the pins as well. This is optional, not mentioned in the manual at all, but I feel a little bit better uh, because I know this is a contacting part. So now we're ready to put everything back together, um, just in the reverse order that we pulled it out. And just make sure this spring clip is in the orientation it was uh, as when we pulled it out. And it's a little bit tricky to get everything lined up just right on the first try, but just kind of keep at it um, and eventually you'll get there. So these only need to be hand tight for now. Uh, we'll torque everything down when the caliper is back on the bike. Now that our caliper is all put back together, we can take it off of its hanger and just slide it back into place onto the rotor. And we're going to grab our new um, caliper bolts. And we'll torque it down in a minute. Caliper bolts here are going to 22 foot pounds. And the brake pad pins are going to 13 foot pounds. Don't forget to put the brake hose clamp back on. Then when you're done with both sides, remember that your pistons aren't compressed against the rotors yet. So give, uh, give your brake lever a few good squeezes and after maybe half a dozen or so, it'll start to return to normal pressure. Last but not least, don't forget to screw your brake fluid reservoir cover back on and wipe up any dribbles that may have come out. And if any came out at all during the procedure, um, even if you wipe thoroughly, I recommend putting some painter's tape on this side piece of fairing here. Uh, and leaving it on for maybe the first day or two of riding because um, there's probably going to be some dribbles that you couldn't get to and if you actually care about your fairings this is the only way to make sure that they stay pristine.